Welcome to Bible Over Brews, deep thoughts formatted over times and headlines. I'm your host, Aaron Crude Juice Viverka, with my co-host, George. Yo. My other co-host, Gumby. Hey, what's up? So hot right now. <laughs> my other co-host, Keith. Let's drink. My man. And my other co-host, Edward. I don't know if I'd say co-host. Co-host. <laughs> you know, we're glad you're doing better, Edward. We're all happy. We're happy to have you here. Glad to have you healthy. Once you get injured on set, oh, you're a co-host. It's great to be here. I mean, right off the rip, though, right off the rip, before we even get into the beers, like, I just want to let you guys know how offended I am. Super offended. That wasn't hard, was it? <laughs> but I, what, what, I heard you guys saying offensive atheist jokes. And I'm wondering if you guys have the guts to share these offensive well, atheist jokes. George, we were right going to tell now. them tonight, but you, you would have no faith or believe in them. So, <laughs> Was that the joke? Was that, did you re-engineer the joke? Right. Are you, it's <laughs> not even as funny anymore. Right, like, I don't even do the joke anymore. Like, <laughs> so, so, so it lacked like lo- logistics and sense is what you're saying. I mean, the fact... Yeah, like, I just had to believe it, that the joke was, was funny to laugh. It was last multiverse. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I, mean, I just had to believe it was funny to laugh. I didn't have to actually understand it or like try to well, understand it. The fact laugh. it offended it... Uh, I'm sorry. Offended you Very, just shows you you had faith in the joke. Does it? Well, you or were I offended, right? the joke. I was offended. <laughs> Super offended. All right. It worked. So, so anyway, what's today's beer, bros? We are tempting the fates tonight. I'm scared. What's going on? We are more. drinking Corona. <gasps> doom, doom, doom. In, dun, dun, dun. in spite of the coronavirus, what? we are. Am I going to get coronavirus juice? You know what? We're going to cover that topic because 38% of the people in this country apparently do believe that. But we're going to let Keith speak about that in a Which second. Which is wild because, I mean, how many people believe in the Bible? <laughs> we'll get to that too. Okay. But hey, Edward, I have a question for you. Yes. I have Edward. Would you drink Corona with a mouse? I would drink it with a mouse in my house, even <laughs> though I don't have mice in my house. He does not. But I would do that if it were a thing. <laughs> and I was some <laughs> sick kind of like. <laughs> Alcoholic doctor do So you've started drinking. <laughs> <laughs> George, w- would you drink it in a tree? I Wait a second. That was, you, th- right. you threw that one for and me. Mine was he like didn't mix it up. I, get, I, get, I would drink it while I pee. <laughs> Gumby. Yo. Would you drink it with a fox? Yes. I would drink it with a fox in a box. <laughs> Am I the only? <laughs> this are... is the last time we wing a gag. <laughs> like next time we rehearse it, that was, that was We're almost just hard. Do it. <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> got to flow, you know, like your pee pun. <laughs> oh, you got to save us. So we are drinking Corona, and uh, it is an ABV of a four point six. I don't believe it really has much of an IBU at all. We are going What's an IBU again? I don't even know what that is. That's you know how bitter it is. Does it even say? I don't believe it does. Well, it's like probably because it tastes good. That. Don't you have to say? Come on. And if it doesn't, it's, if it's not it's bitter, not, not in it's Mexico. It's not really a law, is it? Yeah. <laughs> right. Cheers. So off. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. There's probably a law, and then like Trump's like, who needs it? <laughs> <laughs> it was a law before Trump. I know I'm out of turn, but I would drink it anywhere. Without a care in my underwear. Oh, he would drink it anywhere in his underwear. I'm telling you, without a care. Keith, without a care. Keith's got the flows. <laughs> He's a poet, and he didn't even know it. <laughs> I actually, so he I didn't. know we talked about this last time. All right. I recently, um, I drank so many IPAs, and I drank the worst stout I've ever drank in my life. I drank a stout so bad I quit drinking stouts entirely. Then I drank so many IPAs, I quit drinking like heavy <laughs> beers. So I went back to like dad beers or like lagers. So I, I like myself a good Corona now. All right. And you, you add a lime in there. You know, it's a, it's a refreshing beer. If you're going to go, you know, if you're going to order a beer and say to go to Edgewater Park, where you're allowed to consume alcoholic beverages now, if you purchased there, of course. When did that happen? If purchased there. Okay. Ooh. Otherwise, you have to have it in a red or in a, a box. In a box with no <laughs> container. In a box. In with, a, a with a fox, yeah. but yeah, you could drink at Edgewater in your now. Socks. So yeah, you know, you either a have to have it in like a it can't 
like yeah like a red solo cup yes you'll see people drinking red solo cups because they're being discreet about what i see and then there's a bar there and you could order but now if i was just holding a corona or something like that that was not offered there like they would yell at you oh yeah you know when i lived in indianapolis real quick like they changed the law like downtown right before the super bowl where you could drink outside and then they got That's rid awesome. of all the curbs so that drunk people wouldn't fall off the curbs because there were no longer <laughs> any curbs. Wait, was that just for the Super Bowl or the whole time? Well, I mean, there aren't any curbs to this day. They took so them you, out. So you're saying when I was in Indianapolis for a month, I could have just been walking around with a beer and I didn't take advantage downtown, of Downtown, like yeah. in the I was in downtown business. every well, you, day. Yeah, you didn't walk around with a beer. Yeah, you could tell. Uh, when you go to Vegas, yeah. you could tell who's from the Midwest because <laughs> you people. Tell me these things. Because you're allowed time. to drink out in the streets in Las Vegas. And you could tell who's from the Midwest because they'll stop. And drink their beer, and then there's like all these like beer bottles and like cups and stuff like that by the door. But you don't have to; you can just walk right out with it. Now. Yes, <laughs> hmm. huh. so. interesting. Good to know. But I like me a good Corona. I th- I think all this right. is refreshing. I think it's fun. Does it? Is it have like a ton of flavor? No, but it does taste like a beer. It's not like we're drinking like a Bud Light or something like that. And I would say for a summer, even though it's like dead of winter and it's pretty cold out right now, I would say during summertime, I think a Corona with lime. Yeah. You know, I want to look like Vin Diesel as I am holding it by the neck. Do you guys know why <laughs> Vin just like Diesel him, does dude. that? No. So it's because, right, this first sip's really quick. So now, with your hand down here, that's going to warm up your beer. Mm-hmm. So you take that first sip, it's gone. Oh, so it's actually practical. It's not just Vin Diesel looking cool in the Fast and the Furious. So now, look. So now, look, we don't have to worry about having... Yeah. Well, we're going to Vin Diesel the rest of these. We're going to Vin Diesel the rest of these brewskis. And I'm going to add a, a factoid for you. Mm. Oh, juice with the factoid. Yes, this is a considered... because he's Catholic. ...a gluten-free beer. <laughs> ah. Oh. So I did not know that. It's yeah. a health drink. Yes. So it is certifiably <laughs> a health drink. Yeah. Here's to our health, fellas. <laughs> yes. Hey. <I'm> <laughs> Touch it. Touch it. Touch it. Oh, I didn't read. Yeah. I was about it. Well, like like Edward was saying though, like yeah. what if this could be the, you know, the vaccine the for the virus? Oh right? my god. Yeah. If you Who, think about vaccines, don't out? they put a bit of the virus in a vaccine? That would be amazing. I... I'm telling you. I don't know. Is this fake news? So that's the other survey. <laughs> it's how rumors get started. percent of Americans believe that Corona is the vaccine. For yeah, I you like go, we Keith. You go, way. Keith. Just roll with Let's it. Go. Let's go. Let's go. Go in your article. So, uh, we yeah. So back. we're doing Bible over brews news. So we all brought an article in, and so we're drinking Corona. Keith's gonna roll right into his article right oh, now. Yeah. Let's do it, baby. So that's that's the headline right there. Is apparently according to this PR firm, S five. That was a five. 5WPR, I don't even know what that stands for. It's got a number <laughs> no at the beginning does. of the acronym. This PR firm put out a press release that announced that Corona sales are tanking in lieu of coronavirus and that they did a survey and 38% of Americans are no longer drinking Corona because they believe it Idiots. causes coronavirus. <laughs> so... Everybody ran with this. It went in the news. Uh, as you can see here, we are drinking Corona, so I would count us in the 62%. <laughs> or what's in reality, the 4% with a margin of error of approximately 3 to 4%. So it might actually be zero sense. people. Uh, oh. <laughs> this is oh Dr. Numbers. This is so Dr. Numbers. <laughs> everybody just rolled with this headline. Corona actually had to put out like a press release that said, like, our sales are not suffering. Our customers are smart enough to realize that Corona the beer does not cause corona the virus. Right. Um, so oh, let, okay, I heard their okay. stock dropped. Okay. I, I just heard that. I didn't look into it any further. I heard but, that so you're too. saying that corona said no, their sales are fine. Yes. Okay. I don't know if that what that does a stock. So, so you're stocks right. are in a wacky Fake land, news. but Fake news. Where's the origin <laughs> of the right, name Trump. from then? <laughs> so then the name it comes from, for both corona. Corona is that that thing around the sun. The corona of the sun. I don't know what a corona is. Um, I never knew. I, I forget what you Ooh, call that, but I think that's the. Isn't that like next time I'm drinking? I'm don't you see the corona you when do, there's an eclipse? You see the corona coming around you see the that sun. Kind of yes. That's really what it is. Yes. Like, you're not supposed yes. to look at it, so you don't. You shouldn't see it, but but if you I did, did look at it, well, you, like, you can get me a and my filter. friends recount how long we could stare at the sun the longest. <laughs> that explains <laughs> so much. If you of us have ever seen this corona. Yes. Okay, and so if you if if you get it one of those darkened well, we filters, well, obviously you guys don't need to see it to believe it. I do. <laughs> oh. you... <laughs> <laughs> Zing. So apparently the corona, you know, if you can imagine a virus in your head, I haven't looked at a 
a drawing of the coronavirus. But you can imagine like the little like twisty guy with the DNA yeah, like and the, the little legs. Hands, yeah. You know, all of us had the little thing about HIV in middle school or whatever. Right. Um, I, I also saw Spider Man three with Venom. Sweet. Yeah. That was, that was <laughs> I saw like a picture that. of the Spider -Man coronavirus 3? up close, yeah. and it was actually uh, pretty. Like, but beautiful. it's supposed to have a corona, right? Yeah. The coronavirus. Yeah. It has like something around some part yeah, of it like or something. Oh, it's actually uh, a cool looking. All right, so it gets it's its actually a cool looking way virus. It looks, which happens to be a very popular beer. Right. right. It, have you seen it? It, it huh. looks like a ball with a bunch of little things sticking out of it. Yeah, red dots and some yeah. little. Yellow dots. Only a Catholic nice. would find that beautiful. It's, uh, <laughs> it, it, how intricate. It, <laughs> it looks like something you toss your kid. Yeah. So, Keith, I, I don't know you if you're an expert on the coronavirus or not, but I do have some questions. Sure. And that, that was my first one. Like, um, is there is there really a lot of people dying from it then? Or is this like something that, like, is it like a flu that you get and it's bad? And if you're it's, necessarily, like, if you're elderly or you're already, like, weakened in some way, that's... Get, yeah. So, so the interesting about coronavirus. And actually, I watched a little video that was show, comparing this to like SARS. And I wish swine I, flu. I wish I would have pitched this to you before. So, so <laughs> That's I okay. I actually I'm prepared glad. for this thank yesterday. You, brother. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, what's actually interesting and kind of encouraging. I mean, we're still obviously in the early stages of coronavirus, um, but that there's compared to like SARS or H1N1, that there's way more infections but way fewer deaths. And those deaths are isolated to the old and infirm. Okay. Mm. So right. it's actually like, and if actually mm -hmm. a, a really a really promising sign is that there's been cases in the U.S. that have popped up where they haven't had any known contact with anyone else, which means it's probably been here for a while mm. and we're not dying from it. We just don't care. We're like uh -oh. Americans. We're like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, like it's like one of those alien it. movies where the aliens have been here forever. <laughs> oh, we're just now finding oh, it out. Right? Yeah. They're yeah, here, yeah. right? right. They've so, been here. Yeah, that movie yeah. with Nicole Kidman. Is that um, the one? I don't know uh, what you're talking about. Oh, no, no. About, I was thinking of the other one with the big time wrestler. I don't. That's I feel like they're all like that. Like no, they've been is here it forever? They've remember, he's got around. the sunglasses. Roddy, Roddy Piper. Right? Yeah, yeah. They're here, right? Or uh, I forget what uh, that's it. Uh, yeah. You know, this movie weekend? sounds amazing already. Oh, it's a movie. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh, my remember, God. Remember, remember, he's like. So what are they doing? I came you... here to chew gum. <laughs> right. I I don't know. I can I can think of a Duke Nukem quote when you mention <laughs> that. Um, uh, so what are people doing? Like if you, if you get coronavirus then, is it, is it just like a heavy flu or are they saying like, like recommending a lot of fluids or like, is there any kind of like, are they taking antibiotics or like what's, what's the gig? Apparently, you know, it can really vary. Like a lot of us could have it and not even know it because yeah. it can be completely <clears throat> asymptomatic. It could be like a common cold. It could be something more serious. It sounds like kind of like flu symptoms. Um, you know, probably in this kind of environment, just to be safe, it's probably a good idea to check in with your doctor, even though it's going to instantly cost you $500 in our health right. insurance market. That's another topic. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, another <laughs> day. that's another day. <laughs> they, um, they live. So They you, live. That's it. <laughs> yes. You know, uh, being a skeptic, just, just wondering, how, uh, how effective do you think prayer is? And curing the uh, coronavirus. Uh, exactly. How jungle. many? How many uh, cases of coronavirus have been uh, cured strictly through uh, prayer juice? I don't what think do anyone's think? claiming that. I'm. I'm just asking because I'm just saying they're like thoughts and prayers for everyone getting the coronavirus, and I mean, I'm like, well, don't waste your nice, time because like... you could be watching Netflix instead, <laughs> and that's going to help them just as much. Oh, juice is a big prayer guy. I am. I am. <clears throat> the. The trouble is, is that I don't believe that prayer is a magic genie. All right, I, I don't think that just. But because... you believe that, uh, and I don't want to get too sensitive. But you've shared with me that like prayer has helped you, like it has. in some like very strong portions of your life, which is fairly magic genie juice, right? <laughs> You're saying I don't I'm just saying so. it's helped you in some pretty significant parts. It has. That's pretty magic genie. I would not go magic genie. I, I think. <laughs> Prayer can help people in a lot of ways to like cope and stuff, but God allows things to happen. And Absolutely. He's not Puff the Magic Dragon. You know what I'm Thank saying? You. Like, yeah, that's not you. true. Yeah. God is Puff the Magic Dragon. He can make anything happen. Uh... He drowned a whole planet, number one. <laughs> Two, he burned no, down an entire village. <laughs> he made a virgin get pregnant, which has never happened in the history of anyone ever. Um, so he Wait, is Anakin Puff the Skywalker. Magic Dragon. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I've been I, I missed a Mr. Lion and I'm hearing an O. So I'm like, dang it, did I just get hurt? I missed it. I, there was like an O and I'm like, dang it, I missed the line. I just got I burned. Know, you had a I was waiting there. for a reference, man. <laughs> Gumby was on it. Lightsaber in hand. Now that I, now that I know that's I down there, I'm going to do a lot of things with that. We still, where's Wait, our I don't think George knew that. 
What did I? I don't know. I missed the line. You know, entirely. Anakin Skywalker was a virgin birth. He was. Oh, I did know that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I, I no, I seriously missed the line all outright, and then Joe's, Juice made the sound, and I'm like, dang it, did I just get smoked? I, uh, but he did. But I mean, yeah, a lot of Star Wars is off the uh, the Bible. I mean, I think it's lame that they did that they did that route, but mm. I get why he did at least. But not my. Not my it's favorite. not nearly as lame as the sequels, no. but. That's another topic. Wait, you like the prequels better than oh, the sequels? Oh, yes. <laughs> I did not know we disagreed. Now we're going to go for an hour-long discussion. <laughs> do we, are we going to do Bible over Bruce or Bible over Star Wars right now? Because, wait, wait, wait. Like, I'm upset. I am, I am triggered. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's like, do it. listening Let's do it. to Tommy Lauren Come right on, now in my do liberal it. nature. Do it. Do it. I can't handle this. <laughs> Why, George? The prequels are absolute garbage. Listen... Let's talk about the prequels. What happened was, I get it. The argument is George Lucas made the movies he wants to make. That's not necessarily always the best thing, okay? Just like Rian Johnson made a crappy sequel in the second one, all right? No one said no to George Lucas. He's like, yeah, I got all these like, great ideas. This is what I think is going to happen. And everyone's like, yeah, George Lucas, you should do that. That's super cool. He didn't have like his best bud there. Like... Like if Juice like, like yeah, right if I have a great I think I have this awesome idea like I need someone to bring me down to earth like Juice is like nah, George I don't know there was no one telling George Lucas no everyone's like yeah bro <laughs> run with it that's a great idea like you should just kill Darth Maul in the first episode even though he's the best thing that's ever happened to this sequel like so I don't <clears throat> disagree with anything you said right there because one thing I did not say was that the prequels are good. All I said was that they were better than the sequel trilogy. Let me hear. Okay, let me hear. <laughs> let me hear your piece then. <laughs> so the prequels actually like it match. It validates the main trilogy. Like it actually is a cohesive whole. There actually is storytelling. There is an environment built. Whereas the sequels were basically like, hey, let's just give these directors whatever they want to do with Star Wars properties. And see, that's what. Okay, now. Uh, Ironically, there's some gray area here where I could agree with you, but I would still say that they're better because they feel like Star Wars movies. What's weird is George Lucas, the creator of Star Wars, made the prequels, but they don't feel like Star Wars movies. They feel weird. They don't feel like they're part of the uh, um, the universe. The writing was just god awful. Like the first one was like quirky and funny, and they like played off each other, and then they're like all serious, and it's like. Um, at least the sequels had that. Like the like J.J. Abrams and even Rian Johnson. You know, they're like, this is what made Star Wars great. This this attitude, this, like, I don't know what would be the word I'm looking for, universe, this culture, is what made this movie great. And they took that and they ran with it. Where, like, George Lucas scrapped that for the prequels, which is really weird. And am I wasting too much time over Bible? No, 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 no. We did rabbit I trail. I, I totally agree the dialogue is garbage, especially in 2 and 3. I I feel like... If it was movies, if they were, these were just, like, space movies on their own without supposedly being backed by the Star Wars mythology, which was this carefully crafted story for better or for worse. Like, yeah, the, the sequels would be great movies, but the problem was is that they had to, like, not deny the prophecy of the Chosen One, which they basically did. Like, what Darth Vader did, what Luke Skywalker did in the main trilogy is basically garbage after what you they guys can did in the I sequel. make a confession. I know nothing. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sorry. You can't. I know. We're nerding I out. I know nothing like, about Star Wars. We've both done our homework on and this. And I've done nothing to change that. Like, sometimes when you guys are talking, I'm like, oh, you guys know way I, more about this. I'm like, I think I heard about this once. And I'm like, I'm like yeah. But we're clearly, we're like, I'm in this. And I would agree with you. I would say the biggest problem with the sequels is that um, the two directors mess it up. J.J. Abrams kind of set up mm. this area. He's like, hey, we're going to go this direction. And then Rian Johnson's like, no, no, I'm going to do my own thing. And you know what? I'm just going to stop there because this is can, Bible. Can, it's not Bible. Can, can, can I confess? Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Can, can I confess that I'm working on two episodes coming up? One is the theology of Star Wars. Oh, wow. And you can. You know what? That'd be wow. fun for me and, because, yeah, oh. it is very uh, religious-based, yes. And one is the theology of Lord of the Rings. And that okay. one would be cool, too, because I recognize I it. The I, Star Wars one, I think I have a colonoscopy during that, so I won't <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> Star Wars is very, yeah. I mean, again, like he mentioned, uh, like Darth Vader having, um, his mom was a, uh, a virgin like birth. That. I mean, that's clearly stolen from, uh, or, you know, borrowed from, uh, um, you know, Christianity or whatnot. So, yeah, it's, it's very uh, good versus evil. Um, but at least, like, that one, like, it admits it's a fantasy it admits it's made up. You know, this one is trying to be like real life. Oh, so right. right on the Star Wars, I wanted to pitch one thing real quick. Yeah, I, I pitched yes. this to my brother and he liked the idea. So there's a ton of stuff about the prequels that is like pretty dumb. 
But there's one part in isolation that I think is really fun, and it Go only it. happens like the second not, or third time. I'm not saying there's it's the racist that... stuff, right? No, no, no. <laughs> it's it's Sheev Palpatine just watching him play everybody. When you actually go back and understand the politics, you're like, this is kind of cool. This. So what my pitch is is while we still got um, Ian McDermott, you know, he's getting up there in years, and and especially he's gonna look real old really soon. He already does look pretty old because he's pretty old. We need to have like maybe like not a full series, but maybe like a series of mini series where it's directed by Vince Gilligan in the style of Breaking Bad, but right. it's all about Sheev Palpatine playing everybody. It's like Breaking Sith. Yeah, I think oh, this would be awesome. That would be pretty cool. I, I, all right, I'm, all right. I'm, I'm you sold. sold. Me. I'm sold, <laughs> you sold and me. I'm not. And you know what? Um, of my, my many complaints of the uh, prequels, you, I never complained about Palpatine or the actor portraying him. And I mean, really, that is, I feel like that was a fair role. That was a fair take on how he got power. I thought that was all good. I think it was just like other things. But uh, yeah, look at that's fair. <laughs> anyway, so back, back to, to the coronavirus. coronavirus. <laughs> I, do, I, do, I have to finish this up so we don't actually leave the audience with, an, uh, with a mistaken understanding that 38% of Americans actually believe that corona causes the coronavirus. Please. So let me go over the survey questions that they use to supposedly derive this conclusion oh, of 38%. Gosh, I hate studies. <laughs> so the questions they call up people and ask them are, are you a beer drinker? Are you a corona drinker? Is corona related to the coronavirus? In light of drinking, of, I'm sorry, in, I was about to say in light of drinking coronavirus. In light of the coronavirus, do you plan to stop drinking corona? Would you buy corona in a store? That's the one we could rhyme on. Uh, would, would you, you order Corona you in a restaurant, bar, or public hole. venue? That's how we got on Dr. Seuss. <laughs> Which I still want to ask you about these mice that you're drinking with. Like, if you give I a mouse a Corona, this would make a great book series. There's uh, got to be something in the Corona. In the final extra. question, this is what 38% of respondents answered um, no to. Would you buy Corona under any circumstances now? So because 38% of people in the study said they would not currently buy oh, Corona gosh, ever... I... That's what they media. reported. I hate media so much. <laughs> I hate all of Everyone you. Everyone just needs to think for themselves. Oh, my God. Do any of you think Corona has anything to do with coronavirus? No. no. Well, what's there interesting? A couple articles. A hundred percent of Bible over Brews co-hosts <clears throat> believe that this is all bull. <laughs> so, so an interesting thing, though, sequence of questions. So the, the relevant question was in the middle there. In light of coronavirus, do you plan to stop drinking Corona? Four percent answered yes to that, but keep in mind the third question That's was: 4%. Is Corona related to the coronavirus? So it's like a leading question where it you're is. trying to get people to yeah. answer, <sighs> like, and they can't even answer that, so they have to switch to a different question. The reporter to make it look like they're a really good PR firm that can help your company out of a brand crisis caused by some global event you have no control over. Because that was the point of this was not to study the effects of you know how the Corona beer was faring in light of the coronavirus but to sell PR services to brands in crisis. Oh, I hate humans. I hate <laughs> humans so much. I, I remember I, uh, oh, gosh, it's, it's been a while now, but I remember going to uh, Europe, like, uh, I mean, it's probably getting close to a decade ago now. Um, and I remember, like, reading their tabloids and their news, and I'm like, this is so cheesy. Like, this is so melodramatic. I'm like, thank God our news isn't like this. <laughs> And here we are. <laughs> it's clickbait, awful, just misleading garbage. That's not even like, oh, I hate it. I, I wonder it so how much. many truly religious people would actually think that, that <clears throat> there's some kind of correlation between the two. Ooh. By really religious, I, well, mean like I mean like evangelical religious. Yeah. You know but I mean? Like there, Pence. I don't, I don't think there would be any correlation <laughs> oh. between like religion and believing this stuff. Have you met a lot of evangelicals? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I probably have. Yeah, that's but coming from I, an evangelical. I, 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 I feel like I'm. To I don't want to like demon juice, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be nervous. Yeah, I just, I just don't want to fall down like, like too big of a stereotype. But I would feel like general people like juice? that are quick to believe anything yes. are yeah, quick okay. to believe that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, so yeah, I don't know. But again, I'm falling into like a stereotype. To, I don't want certainly not all to, of them, but it'd be interesting to see those numbers. To back Gumby up. I, I went to before I was before I was Catholic and actually before I went to um to Grace, um, I back was when at, he was a Buddhist monk. I was at a mm. Pentecostal church, <laughs> and this, he's right. This is considered demon juice. I mean, there was like I Corona remember, in particular, or just beer, just beer, just beer. And actually, any alcohol at all. I had a discussion with Man. because I I proved to the pastor. I said, listen, I went over the Greek and the Hebrew words. 
etymology. And you know what his response was? He said, well, let's say you drink one beer. That means you're one one hundredth of the way to being drunk. <laughs> yes. Okay, well, what did Jesus turn that water into? Demon juice. Uh, uh, it was clearly grape juice. It was clearly. <laughs> I, mean, I know. I That's how I, bad it is. That's weird, how bad it is. I would love to get like a, I'd love to like talk to a priest or something like that one time. But I just like I feel weird about like what's weird is I could be rude to you guys and like argue with you guys. I feel bad like someone that's um, like made like a strict life choice. Not the and, priests. Like, I mean, I'm just I mean, saying, like a priest or someone that actually has like a position in like a church. I, I'd love to talk to him, but I, I feel like the polite part of me. I can make like, that I happen. I can just trash Juice no, is my closest so friend. I can trash him all day. George, like, I feel I can like, make that happen. <laughs> yeah, I feel like there are, like anybody, there's different personalities with priests, and some of them would be like, "I'm not dealing with this," and some of them would be really cool with like, "Yeah, yeah, you're you're being rude, but like, I can take it." And I can give you back answers. Like I can take what you're giving uh, out. Yeah. Some of them, would, would, some of them would be like, eh, "I can't deal with this." Um, if you could make that happen, we'll, I edit, make it we'll happen. edit that out in post. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I would just have to do my homework, and I, you know, I, I would say my first question is, it's like if you, well, I don't know, they would have to strictly believe everything that they're preaching. Yeah. Everything in this book, they'd have to strictly believe. Yep. And like so, that I feel like that would give me a lot of ammunition. Absolutely. And uh, I don't know, that would be interesting because, right? You're saying like, Juice, you don't believe everything. That's why I'm. I always find it weird that you pick the team. I always find it weird that you pick the team because, like, you you research so deep and like, I. I uh huh. That's why I picked that team. They agree. Yeah, but <laughs> I don't know. But you don't believe everything. I don't know. I would like to. Your priest was pretty cool. He had he had a beer with us. Oh yeah, Couple. definitely. Yeah, yeah, he's fun. Let's bring yeah. him in. Brother Brown, yeah, he's because, fun. Because yeah. I also yeah. have an issue, like, I don't know, for something, I believe it's a lie. I, I believe this is clearly, okay, you know what? And then, are you ready to edit out a, a swear? <laughs> are, are you ready to edit out a swear? Like, no one, anybody, guys, when you read this, like, no one's bullshit alarm started tingling. No one's bullshit. Why do you think I did so much research? Yeah. Juice, this is just full of it, though. But like, it's, it's so easy. Like, clearly... Do you you don't believe in magic, but you believe in this, and that drives well, me crazy. Define, it drives me crazy. Define magic. Turning uh um whatever into wine, water into wine is never happened. Why? Well, for because us, we can't it's do that. magic. If you are the creator of the universe, switching molecules up isn't that hard. Juice. If you know what, there's so many other things he could do better yeah. with his power, and he didn't. And it's such garbage in to believe that. That's a story. That's a story opinion. to get people back in that day to like buy in. They're like, yeah, he turned water into wine. And then all these idiots from whatever century that was was like, yeah, yeah, I believe that. No. If if I said Jesus was alive and at my house last night and he did that, you guys would be like, you're crazy, George. You, Jesus so, wasn't at your so, house. Like, it's like, no, you would never believe that under any other terms. Right. Save us, Keith. Save oh, us. I, was, I, I don't want to pick a nit, but there's kind of a fallacy in there that old people were idiots. The the all ancient people were idiots. I, I feel like a lot of them were. I would say that. I mean, clearly they. Listen, I get what you're saying, but the bar has been raised. Can you make? Is that a word? Can you make? The bar has been raised. <laughs> I don't know. Clearly. I look around today and I'm like, we're surrounded <laughs> by idiots. Yeah, but I mean, I don't know. Like whatever. Fifty years ago, we thought smoking was healthy. You know. So I'm just saying, the bar gets raised every year. Well, George, in a hundred, two hundred years, people are going to look at our generation like those people were idiots. That's what. Okay, that's the argument I'm making. Is right there. That's what. That's all I'm saying. But like, we're not that, all idiots. Yeah, you, but some the, of us are. But when, you're saying developmentally, we haven't done that in terms of the Bible. I'm saying developmentally, like back then, just the people weren't as smart as we are now. All right. Is all is what I'm yeah. saying. Yes. Let's, let's, so, and I agree with you. That's that's exactly the argument that I'm trying to make right now. And okay. like, it's like, listen, 50, 60 years ago, we thought we we thought African Americans were lesser humans. Our whole country not bought into that. But well, not everybody. Sorry, a lot. That's why there was a, a civil lot that war. it was law. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Let me go back. Let me go back. Three hundred years ago, we thought black people. Three hundred. That's not even that long. Yeah. That's it's not, not. long. It's not. And I can give you that. And we thought black people were lesser human not beings. That would never happen. I guess that's so clearly against the law. Everybody of... thought that, though. And that's why a there was a civil people war. Did. A lot of people did, Juice. A lot. I, I, I agree. Sorry. I agree a lot 70 years ago, the entire country of Germany, sorry, high 90s, thought it was okay to kill Jewish people. But not everybody. Our, oh, and that's gosh. why it's Jews. Well, I, actually, I, got, I got a better example than go, that. Go. So, yeah, 70 years, 
the German, substantial parts of the German government thought it was okay to kill millions of Jewish people. But if you go back 170 years, German people did not think that because they did not do that. Thank you. So this kind of shows the ebb and flow. It's not necessarily based on what era you're in. You don't always accumulate extra knowledge. Sometimes we inject stupidity. Yes. Actually, quite often we inject stupidity into mass quantities of people. Mm-hmm. And end up doing really destructive well, things. I would say that I don't know. Let's, I feel like that's rare for that anything like that to let, happen. Okay, now, let's let's, t- let's like um, with the exception of like the Middle East right now. They're hold on, right? Let's take my people, the Czech Republic. We never had slavery. We never got involved in the African slave trade. That's an entire country that never got involved in it because we don't believe in it. All right. So are you trying to argue? <laughs> okay. I so understand that I'm making it, blanket statements. Okay, I will say I'm making <laughs> blanket statements. What I'm really trying to say is that I'm saying a very large, substantial portion of the population. I understand if by saying a blanket statement, you're going to be able to find a few people that no, did not follow that. But you're saying as a human race, then, you're saying we have not gotten substantially more intelligent in understanding so, the yes. world around us. Oh, then why are you arguing with me right now? Because... That's not morality. There's a difference. Morality's gotten a thousand times better, Juice. Juice, mm. we used to make blacks sit in the back of the bus. That was a law. That's America. We elected humans That's that were... America. Juice, America... Okay, then, okay, so for the entire country... The majority of the world is not America. All right, but for the entire country, Juice... All right. That's a lot. That's, that's a good chunk. No, it is. I don't think the whole country was behind that. I agree. When it was happening. You, um, you none of us were alive, like, but it was accepted. Well, you have to accept that. That I'm saying the whole the whole country was behind that. You have to accept that. There wouldn't have been. I don't a think that's war. true. Right. I don't think. And, everyone and, was okay, give me that. give me a there, pro- give me a portion. Were... Give me give me what's your what is it? What do you think? 70, 80? 50, 50? No, but in any population anywhere, what do you think? It was like three people. Quit acting people. like there's three people that were like, no, you know what? I think we should make them sit in the back of the bus, and the rest of us were like, okay. No, and then I the rest think, of the country was clean. You, I, I don't I'm think tired of you guys trying to make this that argument that when that's that clear that that was it. But you're trying to be like, well, they, I mean, the country was good. No, it wasn't. I'm not saying that. I'm it not was not that. good. What I'm saying is these kind of things are driven again by money and politics. All right. Let's take let let's go back to the to World War II. It was actually a small majority that uh, a small minority that drove a majority because people were afraid not to comply. People were afraid not to comply. I'm gonna go back. All right, whatever. I'm I'm ditching this argument. I totally 100. percent I could not disagree with you more. Okay, I listened to a lot of 90s music. All right, I love it. I was just listening to it the other day. Song. It's the bomb. And so this might be another slur, Gumby. <laughs> A very popular band, a very lighthearted. They're a comedic band, okay. okay. And hey, Tenacious D. No, but I wouldn't. Be, it wouldn't <laughs> surprise me. But very, very similar. All right. Okay. Um, and I would say, you know, even like a, you know, Eminem. The word "fag" was used regularly. I'll give you that. It was okay. I'm saying this was a very po- listen. If it you was. if this band said that in their album today. People would lose it. And I'm just saying it's because, right? I'm saying we've evolved as a people and we're just. You agree? I do agree. That we've evolved as a people and we're more ethical now. Like we get it. I, listen, I do agree with that. I do. Just that one, though. But overall, I am going to also say that that (laughs) song meant nothing in Europe because that just means they're smoking. Uh, is that the context he was using? Though? <laughs> I, I don't. I mean, I guess I, I don't want to speak on behalf of Europe, but I'm sure no, they were uh, popular in Europe a, too. Peg is a cigarette in Europe. That is true. <laughs> yeah, I did just it's watch a. Uh, but I the don't argument. think. Thank you, Gumby. Back me up because I'm getting salty here. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I feel listen, weird that I'm even arguing I this do agree, concept right I, now. I do agree that the species is evolving <sighs> over time. I do agree. I do agree with that. Why did we just argue for the last five minutes? That <laughs> because Jews? I don't get it. Because the arguments you're using, I don't think are good arguments. Jews, I think, there was enough country for us to enslave black people. There was enough yes. country for us to believe in, yeah, putting them in the back of the bus. Yes, there and was. Not, so clearly mm. that shows an evolution of us being, you know, more, I don't know, more civilized, Here's, more cultured. Here's, More understanding. Here's why we I say evolve this. as a species for the better. Here's why I say this. 
the drive and the power is being taken away from what was previously the power, all right? Previously, only the 1% that had all the money were the ones that drove everything. Well, social media and the internet is changing that. It's allowing the mass of people to now take control. And now World War II wouldn't have happened if we had what we have now. Because now we can step up and do whatever we need. It's giving the power to the people and it's slowly taking it away from the 1%. But, like, right, so you'd say the 1% was they had a clear route in communicating... Yes, everybody. and telling everybody what they had right. to do. Do you think that would happen today, though? If the 1% was something so egregious, mm -hmm. something as egregious as black people sitting in the back of the bus, something so egregious as like Jews are lesser humans, something like that. I'm not saying trying to sell Coke. Right. Yeah. I mean Coca-Cola, everybody. I think World War II is such a broad subject, though. I, I think, oh, yeah. honestly, in my opinion, World War II had a lot less to do with different races than it had to do with geopolitics. Yeah. Um, you know, if you look at World War II, and boy, did we rabbit trail, but... This is a hot, this is a hot topic. We, we have it to is a hot do, topic. We, we should come it, back and turn around you, to this, but think about we this. We have to do a whole episode, just and, because, for you. And, you know, <laughs> we you didn't have a one. state of Israel at the time for Jewish, or, and i.e. a Jewish homeland. Yeah. Would we have a Jewish homeland today if there was a World War II? Good question. We would not. Probably not. Because the influx of the Jewish people that came into Israel came from where? Europe. Yeah. It's true. So I, I think so much was driven by politics, and there are shakers and movers, like you were saying, yeah. that influenced that. And I think a lot of Jewish people who were at the top of that, who threw their own people under the bus. Oh, yeah. In order for these things to happen. And you have that everywhere. I mean, yeah. everywhere you have people who, I, if I can capitalize on my own family, they do it. Right? Everywhere you have that. I would say those shakers and movers is what indicates that we don't, we do accumulate knowledge as a society. Like, you know, we can build computers because people were figuring out vacuum tubes in the 50s or whatever, but we still keep backsliding in core moral ways. Thinking of back to 38% of people in the corona, which isn't true, I would <laughs> almost guarantee you that there might be close to 38% of people who think that closing the Mexican border and harassing immigrants. <sighs> Would actually reduce oh, coronavirus. Deep. I like where we're going right now. That's a deep that. one. Yeah. So we're even as we stop saying you know fag in music, we go back to basically our same old sins. So this is where I come back to the core. Like I I don't know. We're getting better in some ways, but we don't always get better in all ways. We're still in a lot of ways just as gullible because it just takes a group of people who want to believe something to make so... bad stuff happen. Wait, the Mexican border is not closed off. It's closed off from coming over illegally. There are checkpoints you can come through. There are legal ways you can come through. I know people who are coming from other countries like Moldova and uh, Macedonia, places like I hope Eastern you say Europe places, I think you're and say. they're coming over and they're applying for citizenship and they're on the way and they're doing it. There's not a lot of countries except third world countries in this world that you can just go and be like, hey, I live here now. We're not harassing anyone. Yeah. Yeah. We're not. We're not closing. It's not closed. The border is not closed. So to, it's closed to a legal crossing. I have an actual question for this, too. And so my, my question for you, too, and I've always wondered this, and I, it's probably something... It might be more fun just talking about it, right? Like naturally, like we would back in the 90s before we had to Google in our phone, you know, and unlock it, right? <laughs> True. But uh, I was saying like um, how many people are actually scurrying across the border versus like like what's stopping – like I go to Mexico, you know, I, I, I Mexico is a reoccurring trip for me. So what's stopping them from getting a passport and flying to Cleveland saying they're on vacation and just not going back? Yes. What's stopping them from doing that? Is there anything stopping them from doing well, that? Well, it's more like fake news that we don't, we're not allowing people to come to our country. We're always allowing people to come to our country, and we want that. Mm -hmm. And we see that people who come to our country do well, and they prosper because they see, like, they have opportunities here that they didn't have there. They capitalize on it. And you see people who come with next to nothing, and within 10 years, they're running a successful business. Even if they're not running a successful business, which you don't have to be successful 
in the eyes of the world to be successful, yeah. right? And I'm, they're I, doing better. And they're I mean, like, I agree they're with you. Yeah. bettering Basically, themselves. All the immigrants I've met, I've actually... I, to be honest and with you, then, I've liked all the immigrants I've met. And they make America better, you know, yeah. well, well, with, with coming here. But, we, but the thing is, like, what is the sovereignty of a country? I want to be real quick before we go too far away from it, that I was actually referring to a specific news event where in response to coronavirus that the president was actually talking about closing the Mexico border. Now, I know he always just talks about that casually. I didn't know you were. Okay, that's what I was talking about. So I thought you were (laughs) just generalizing and saying that's what's happening. Oh, my God. When are we going to wake up from this president? Like, when is that over? It's exhausting. I'd rather deal with the coronavirus any day. (laughs) <laughs> I'd rather sit in a hospital with the coronavirus. Yeah, right. I know. I agree. Yeah. And part <laughs> of me too, like, or read his tweets. And... I feel, I feel the burn so much. But there was an argument made. I think it was by like I was talking about how, uh, um, uh, was it Boutier uh, dropped out of the race or whatever? And Booty he judge. brought this. Thank you. No, he's still uh, there. No, he just dropped out like thirty minutes. Like thirty thirty minutes ago. Like literally, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that was like breaking news thirty minutes. He dropped out while I was on my bike riding here. Yeah, yeah. Um, (laughs) And like he had brought it up, how exhausting it's going to be to have a Bernie Trump (laughs) election. And I'm like, you're absolutely right. It's going to be exhausting. So here's the thing: if Bernie Sanders is the nominee, I believe you can like take this to the bank. That Trump will be our president again. I think he's going to be well, the, the Trump because I think the standards he's be set again. so low already. That... There's not enough people to. We're not ready to. Em- we're not going to embrace socialism in America. It's because you and don't understand. Is, and that is what yeah, Bernie Sanders stands for. It's democratic socialism, but he's in there to call him socialist, but, okay. socialist, socialist, socialist. That's all what's you're the hear, that's all you have to What's the difference like. between democratic socialism it's huge. and Big socialism? Big difference. Pull it up. Huge. I don't want to no. get into it. No, when Google you say it. that's so vague, what's the difference? Real quick, ballpark. Ballpark, Democratic man. socialism depends on capitalism to fund it. Thank you. Democratic socialism is like healthcare like the UK. It's like college like the Netherlands. It's not government owned industry like Venezuela. Oh, in all those countries where they're slowly finding out those things don't work. Because socialism uh, NHS... always socialism always works in the beginning. Where until are the you gulags in Great Britain? Else's money. I have not heard of any gulags in UK, have now, you? That is a leap. <laughs> speaking of which, speaking I of happen to... Speaking, speaking of segues... Let's take a leap of a segue right <laughs> now. Government. Great socialist country here. So, I happened to grab Stella Artois on their Leap Day special. Because they, they were reimbursing everybody... I was hoping you were going to share this ...for a 6, 12, or 24-pack. <laughs> And so what happened was, if you grabbed one... You're like, long story short, I I bought the 24-pack. I couldn't find a 24-pack. I tried so hard. I did get a 12. Um, But they will reimburse you, or would have reimbursed you, if you had bought it on Leap Day, which I did for the show. So... I am really glad you... Cheers. What I love... (laughs) Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. I like like this episode, even though we're, like, way off track. (laughs) I mean, we're talking about politics, Star Wars. This is my kind of <laughs> party. It's news. Yeah. <laughs> um, what I love is I have such a... Uh, I just tried Cell Artois um, maybe like a month ago. So the first time I ever tried this was like back in college. All right. And back then I was drinking like Natty Light and Bud Light because I was in college. Don't look at me that way, Edward. <laughs> You're like, come on, man. I was like, I'm like, you could buy like a 24 pack for like eight bucks. And then I tried this and I hated it. Really? Yeah. Wow. And so I just tried it like a month because ago. Because you were used to, I guess, water. Yeah. Beer flavored water. Yeah. So, so this is my second. I, I don't know. This isn't pretty strong to me at all. Well, this is actually, believe it or not, this is, this is Maybe Budweiser's better. premium beer. They actually bought out Stella Artois. Hmm. You're buying everybody, even off, even yeah. Cleveland's platform right. got bought yeah. out by uh, Coors. No way. Budweiser. Budweiser? And has yeah. yeah. And has Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. That's really? It. Anyway, yeah. So, speaking of Stella Artois as a premium beer, my first time drinking it was at a fancy wine and cheese, <laughs> cheese bar in this basement <laughs> in, in Coventry called La Cave du Vin. And I bought it because I'm like, well, I don't want wine, but this sounds like a really fancy beer. 
Yeah. Well, funny story. So were you on a date? You like trying to be fancy? Trying <laughs> I to impress? Yeah, I was on a date. I mean, at least a good date. <laughs> so the first time I actually had Stella was at the airport because Russ and I were traveling back from our Muay Thai camp, and we decided that we That's needed a good airport. It is, yeah. We said that we needed a beer. And of course. We were actually in Portland, <laughs> and so we were walking around, and we sat down, and we were tired as what and hungry because we had been training for a whole week. So we go to the first one, sit down. We order some tall boys, tell us, and we, we go through the menu, go through two beers each to find out there's nothing vegetarian on the menu because we're both vegetarians, right? <clears throat> and so we're like, all right, on to the next one. We ended up going to three different restaurants in the airport. Six beers later, we finally found food. (laughs) (laughs) Now I'm hungry. (laughs) I get it. I get it. My wife's a vegetarian. It's so embarrassing, too, when we go to a place and we have to, like, turn around and leave. And I'm all about being vegetarian. I I, I was vegetarian for a year, and then I tried it again um, recently, and I didn't do it. Pansy out. Pansy. Pansy. But yeah, there's almost nothing to really dislike about it. Uh, it's but there light. isn't a whole lot to really say. Yeah, I know. I like I know. it. It's like it's, when you want really good water. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's almost like champagne, right? It's right. like it's good. It's not great. It's they're not a merlot, right? So it's one hundred percent. The next uh, <laughs> skeptics corner. I totally want to bring my two favorite beers in. We should do it. One hundred percent. It's only fair. Yeah. Yep. You guys mind if I bring in free beer? No, please. Please. Here's my dad. It's terribly offended. Well, yeah. <laughs> Let's see if we have a Dar problem you. with that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and actually, me and Juice, we were talking about this. Actually, maybe maybe I'll try the uh, blind. Maybe that'll be a good opportunity for the blind taste test. Yeah. Mm. yeah. There we go. That was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. We have yeah. to do that again. Our next, on our next Skeptics Brulette. Yeah. <laughs> what's, our, what's our next article? Send our a, next send article. Juice. Is going to be about... <laughs> Abortion, be about... whether it should happen or not. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I am actually here to debunk something for Lysol? all of you idiotic <laughs> conspiracy theorists out there. I had never even heard that. This is that not <laughs> This is not for you intelligent conspiracy theorists. <laughs> this is for all of you idiotic conspiracy theorists out, out there. there. All right? Okay. So, turns out there's a whole bunch of people out there who... Uh, for some reason or other, believe that because the term human coronavirus is on the back of Lysol, they believe that they knew about it all the time. And this Ooh. is to reduce human population. <laughs> I, love, I love any theory that involves reducing human population. <laughs> it's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> so here's how it goes. Numerous social media posts falsely suggest that because Clorox and Lysol products list, quote, human coronavirus, unquote, on their bottles, the new coronavirus driving the outbreak in China was already known. Mm. It wasn't. There are many human coronaviruses, and these products I'm were just tested saying that's against awesome. If they were talking about coronavirus before it got mainstream, cold. that's crazy. But here's that the deal. That is a little crazy. <laughs> All right. So here's the deal, though. Here's the full story. In the wake of the expanding outbreak of the new coronavirus from China, people on social media are pointing to disinfecting product labels to falsely suggest the new virus is not new. Quote, so Lysol knew about the new strain of coronavirus. Dun, dun, dun. Unquote. One Facebook post, which is accompanied by a photo with a narrow pointing to, quote, human coronavirus, end quote, listed on a bottle of disinfectant spray. Another Facebook post highlights the words, quote, human coronavirus, unquote, on a container of Lysol disinfecting wipes and says the label of the popular Lysol already show that the product to kill the coronavirus. <clears throat> so that means that this virus is nothing new. <laughs> Other posts make similar claims about the Lysol products. Now, Here's what we're going to go down to. Ready? (laughs) The Chinese government informed the World Health Organization about the outbreak on December 31st and within the week had ruled out other viruses, including other coronaviruses, and isolated the new Mm. virus. Researchers have preliminary found that in uh, 2019, 
NCOV is about 80% similar to the Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, or SARS virus, and is 90%, uh, 96% similar to a bat virus. So the scientists have uh, analyzed the viral sequence from infected patients in other countries, too, and found the sequences are very similar to the first Chinese sequences, collaborating and corroborating the idea that the virus only recently emerged and is new to science. Now, here's the thing, though, and here's what the, the, this article goes on to capitalize on. We've known about human coronaviruses since 1937. They're nothing new. Yeah. They're nothing new at all. So the fact that these go through and disinfect human coronaviruses is actually a good thing and yeah, should be nice well thing. known <laughs> right nice. so, thoughtful yeah. we've nice. known about coronavirus at least since as long as we've known Way about corona the <laughs> at least as long that's true <laughs> but to make that leap for human <clears throat> depopulation i think this is more of the same yeah. just people don't know and then they're talking yeah. like you're yeah, talking yeah. before you know the whole picture exactly and you shouldn't talk before you know everything <laughs> about what you're talking about so this show is over. Well, when you have a couple, <laughs> cor- <laughs> when you have a couple coronas, I mean. So, so I'm going to use this article as Please? my exhibit A in constructing a new theological environment or er, er, argument about <clears throat> the intelligence of people over time. And I'm going to go back from just saying like, oh, well, you know, it's not necessarily that you know we're we're smarter in the future or dumber in the past. I'm going to say that intelligence over time is actually a bell curve, and I think I could be able to argue with this article. That maybe we peaked around the Roman Empire and we've gone all the way down and we're down in the trough now. Ah, that, is that your argument? You're sticking with <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but here's my thing. I, th- I this might mm. sound juvenile, juvenile, or like I don't know what I'm talking Both about. Both good ways to say the word. Y- yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but I think people are like intelligent relative to their time and based on what they have at their disposal. And oh God, like, I just feel like we're so much is smarter it important, now. Isn't even important to say like, have we gotten more smart as a race? Like there are 300 million, million people in this country. There are like what approaching 10 billion in the con- in the world. Like, some people are no smart and some people are dumb. So, yeah. so George, could you, would you maybe argue in <laughs> light of are, this that maybe we are smarter but we're just dealing like better with exponentially more dumb stuff coming at us. Ooh, that you know what I like. I you so, know what I love how you just put that. I, <laughs> you know what? I, I don't know. I can't argue your let, statement. Let right me there. I, to respond to that. I would say this. Thank you, Gumby. Uh, <laughs> just because we have more information at our fingertips doesn't make us smarter. Yeah. Before right. I had God in my hand all the time. All right. Before I had God in my hand all the time at my access whenever I needed it, doesn't make me smarter. There was a time when I had to actually research something and read a book. I feel like I was smarter then. I said, I'm, I'm a like little bit today are... I'm a little bit lazier in that sense, and I got to right. be honest. Yeah, but yeah. I feel like so, having that information, kids are smarter today. It's good and bad. But you can have all the information at your fingertips, but if you're not consuming it and digesting right. it and making sense right. of it, so yeah. now imagine like not having it at your fingertips. So, but no, imagine good. not having <laughs> it at your fingertips. How smart are you going to be? You're going to be as smart as whatever you have at your fingertips. So today, there's so much at your fingertips. I just feel by. Yes, I think by yeah. having that, and there is so much at your fingertips to where you don't even know people's phone numbers anymore, because you're like, my phone knows it, so I don't exactly. Yeah, I, yeah. I think young people are so smart. Like when I when I was a uh, um, back when I was I was uh, still hiring people as a as a manager. I saw young people were just so sharp, man. They're just so used to having information and just ha- being able to process information quickly, learn quickly, and just like able to retain so much more. And, uh, so that's a distinct it. argument from what? people are smart versus young people are smart because <clears throat> I kind of agree. I feel like young people are going to look at a lot of the garbage going on in this particular ten year period and think back. You guys were so stupid back I then. They're gonna, yeah, right. Mm. There's a difference though, and my my son will quote me because he knows I make this this statement all the time. What is the difference between wisdom and intelligence? Okay, go ahead. Intelligence will tell you how to build a laser. Wisdom will tell you not to point it in your eye. Yeah. 
What's your flickability? So, okay. <laughs> you, Edward, so, I, I, I was like, just, just because, I mean, you're, you're onto just, something, but I don't know just, if I want to give you just, the argument. Just, just, because, <laughs> just, be, just yeah. because you have great intelligence, you have great technology, doesn't mean you use it in the proper manner. Exactly, yeah, yeah. And yeah, Martin Luther King said, you know, in terms of where he was at back then, during his time, he said, you know, we have self-guided missiles led by unguided men. Ooh. Yes. So, deep. <laughs> you beat me to it. You turned. I was gonna say. I was. My comment was gonna be hashtag deep, and you said deep. I, I'll, I'll wait for your hashtag uh, in the future. I didn't hashtag it properly. I, <laughs> quit beat me to my quips. That's my role here. You're, so it's it's good and bad. I just don't know as a, 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 as the human race if we were designed to have this kind of capacity. I don't know if we were. Um, I don't know, Juice. What? So. uh Let's let's talk about schools. All right, all right. Do we agree that there's good schools and that there's bad schools? I would say there's less. Juice knows where I'm going, so he's trying less, to make up some weird argument less right now. Better schools. There's le- oh my gosh! Ooh. I'm not saying less better schools, Juice. There's good no, schools there and bad some, schools. There's some shitty schools. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. There's some shit schools, and that's the Catholic answer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. The Catholic will even tell you some of them. I wouldn't go to that one. <laughs> the nuns right. are crazy. So, Juice, and I know this as someone that's very particular about where they send their kids to school. Yep. Okay. So, you have schools, they have some resources, blah, blah, blah. But then you got schools that have a lot of resources and opportunity on their fingertips. Yep. Which one are you sending your kids? And I know the answer. Don't even try to sway it. The better school. Yes. <laughs> so I'm just saying is when you have more information at your fingertips, I'm just saying um, by osmosis, you're going to be more intelligent. You're going to be, you know, both hold more wisdom and be more intelligent by osmosis for the general public. Is all is what I'm trying to argue right so now. So we're back to that more information and more technology thing. Yes. And here's the one point I want to make. It's like I, I think I tried to touch on that earlier. I think like when you're saying this generation's smarter than that generation, or we're getting dumber, or we're getting smarter, or whatever. I think the technology or whatever you have at your hands right now is irrelevant because uh, I disagree. Here, well, let me finish. Finish. Because. <laughs> In 20, 30 years from now, they're going to have stuff that we have no concept of right Right. Now. Absolutely. So am I going to be like, I'm super dumb compared to people that don't exist yet. Like, no, I'm like, I'm as intelligent as I can be based on what I'm, what I'm using at my fingertips now. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, there's going to be technologies that don't exist. Uh-huh. And for those people to look back at us and say, those people are pretty dumb. Oh, yeah. They didn't have this stuff. In, in a hundred years, like we're that's not fair, <sighs> yeah. right? We'll be pr- we'll be seen as like. I, all right, you swayed me a little people. bit. It's cool. like, yeah, cool what about the man that actually invented the first computer versus the person that's like that's developing like, the, the app on like, the next yes. iPhone? Someday, you George. got me. All right, <laughs> Someday, damn it! I, I like to stand strong. You got me a little with that one. <laughs> Someday, you got me. somebody's gonna say, "You're just an old man. You're just an old man." <laughs> And you're going to look at them like, you're just a kid. <laughs> and you're going to be like, if you only knew, like, you're going to be an old man. Shut the hell up. I'm still like- swayed a little bit, but I like, I love your argument so much. I love it. I love it so much. Like, it it, uh, it really brings me down to earth a little bit. It's like, you know, for what you had at that time, yeah. you know, but. We only and have and, and what that, we have. Right. Now, objectively speaking, I'm saying it's, it's cute. It's cute that guy, right, made an you know an Apple computer in his garage. It's cute, all right. He didn't. Mean that. But is he smarter? <laughs> is he smarter than someone that also knows how to make that computer? That like someone that could do that on a whim, and then also develop the next 
app, you know, like or whatever, make the next technology. I can make a driving car that drives itself. That person, Knowing like, about that guy because he's still living and his name Steve Wozniak, absolutely yes. That guy's way smarter than any of us who program every day on his computer. Sure. So much smarter than Steve Jobs. Absolutely. Oh my Jones goodness. Is just a salesman. Steve Wozniak. Was Steve Wozniak. Yeah, he coded great. that by he's hand great. on paper because yeah. he couldn't afford Steve the time Jobs on the computer on the timeshare computer Steve to go to the computer like, lab. Steve Wozniak is the man. So you mean he didn't use Google? Huh? He didn't use Google. Yeah. He didn't even use a computer to program yeah. his first computer. But the guy who comes up with the next <laughs> thing, he ha- Steve Wozniak had to come first. Oh, see, now see, I'm torn. Before he could From, even like... You guys are tearing me up on my argument right now. Of I don't know, but like, what about the kid that that's common knowledge? Building... Oh, see, that's so it's tough. Now I'm, yeah, it I know, there. but now I'm torn now. Like the, the route we went with this argument is not what I intended, and I don't even know what to say right now. <laughs> Like I get, I one hundred percent totally get it, but I, oh, I guess I'm just trying to be. Actually, what's advocate. really funny about that particular example, being someone who went to school for computer science, is they don't teach anything about what Steve was the magic Steve Wozniak did to make that computer or any computer like it anymore. It's considered like too low level to teach college and college students. So we just go on the computer and we're just like. We know how to make new apps for it, but if you told us, asked us to make a computer, we'd be like, oh, I have no idea. Exactly. See, mm. wow. See, I don't know. That's just bringing so much complexity. To it. I don't even know what to say. But you're absolutely. That I guess that's what I'm kind of touching at. But I don't know. You guys kind of charmed me. It just, you guys it charmed just me makes there. It sounds I, like, like <laughs> Adam and Eve were the Steve Wozniaks of their time. <laughs> all they had, and they were the only ones. Part of me still they feels like that was a fig leaf. Somebody and... take his beer away. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Part of me still feels is wrong, but I just I'm so charmed by this argument. I don't even know what to say. I don't even want to disagree with it. I feel like it's unpopular. And it's hey, just, they bit like the it. apple. I mean, I'm I just saying. <laughs> These guys made my argument for me. I don't see. I don't even. <laughs> I have, I'm on autopilot now. I've got nothing to say. Yeah, they bit the <laughs> apple. I don't know. I agree. It's, it's a it's a charming like, argument, man. Do? Before oh Jobs, gosh, before Wozniak. <laughs> <laughs> you right? Yeah, yeah. before that yeah, is, before that like there was technological someone technological advancement. Wow, sewing those fig leaves together, <laughs> which I think was today's right. Weekend. Yeah, no one else sewed sewed uh, fig leaves together before that. Right, they're the Wozniaks. <laughs> I, it's a charming argument. You, you know, I'll, I'll be honest. I'm back at that. I don't even want to go there anymore. <laughs> I I I think I still stand strong, and I feel like the argument's there, but it, it's a very charming. I I love what you guys said. I, I, <laughs> if I was you. if Thank I was you. grading this debate, I give it to you guys. I just, I love it so much. Um, so I'm back in down. Where the hell were we? <laughs> what were we talking about? Bible over brews. Where was? <laughs> so now we got technology. We. <laughs> Will we ever Star finish an article? Wars, <laughs> um, what ridiculous... Was I the only one drinking beforehand? Was anyone else? No. Yeah, but we're not drinking... Oh, yeah. That was you. Vegas. <laughs> the only alcoholic. The atheist is the only alcoholic. I feel like we've been drinking beer here, honestly. I don't even know if I taste alcohol in this. I'm yeah. pretty sure this is I'm just yellow water. We still are. It's Wallace today, maybe. Are we pretty hating pretty on it now? I thought I'm we were all liking it a little bit ago. No, no, now no, we're all hating on it. I have to say, we're fine. for 5%. this being a Budweiser, I'm enjoying it. Okay. <laughs> I actually don't hate Stella Artois. I don't. It's it's not a bad beer. <clears throat> It'll always be my first fancy beer. <laughs> See? <laughs> <laughs> the champagne of beers. Eat your heart out, Miller. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who's the famous actor that uh, endorses this? I don't know. Is it Mark Wahlberg? It's one of those. Yeah. I have what? a story about him. Wait. Uh-oh. That's going to be oh, on our next segment, segment of Bible Uh-oh. Over Brews News, coming up shortly. <laughs> Nice, Lord, I didn't see that coming. So, we're going to wrap up here. Eddie, Eddie. Anything to say, Edward? No. Keith? I'm speechless after that. Gumby? Uh, there's nothing taboo over Bruce. George? I literally have nothing to say to anything. <laughs> He's a Christian now. I, yeah, I'm, like, I'm like, who's going to church Sunday? Because I am. <laughs> Please check us out on all social media. Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, you name it. Please feel free to I think give. I'm atheist now. <laughs> Please feel free to give JK, on JK. Patreon <laughs> or Anchor.fm. Peace. Good night. Good night. Bye.